Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. So if for, for people who are tuning in for the first time, this is where we talk about anything AI and we generally focus on the topic around computer vision and um, you know applied machine learning. So today I wanted to talk about a, a, a topic that some of my subscribers have actually been requesting and that is on image annotation tools. So in order to use any of the you know, novel deep learning, machine learning uh, algorithms, you need well annotated data. And sometimes uh, you may you know, find yourself in a situation there that the images are you know, very novel for the first time you're looking at images like that and there is no real ground truth or annotations that is provided. So what I did is I actually reviewed a lot of annotation tools that are out there. And what I saw was some of them uh, actually required installation on your computer. Um, so what I wanted to do today was show you image annotation tools that do not require any kind of installation. So things that are absolutely browser compatible so that you will be able to run them and launch them and, you know, get your uh, annotation, uh, you know, JSON file at the end just using your web browser. So anybody would be able to use it and you, you'll be able to scale it, share it, as well as, you know, collect your annotated data at the end. So if this is of interest to you, please continue watching and give this video thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. First off, I wanted to talk about different kinds of annotation. So we can actually categorize uh, image annotation into three categories. The first is where you assign a label or a tag to an input. So the input is an image and the output is just a label. So then in that case, it's a classification annotation. And we will be showing you the, the tools in order to you know, get those kind of outcomes. Then the second kind is where you are detecting bounding boxes. So let's say that for this particular image, you are interested in making a bounding box around my, my face, or around my classes, or around you know, different kind of objects. So in that case, uh, your annotations are typically, you know, you have the input is your image, and your output is X, Y, W, H. So X, Y can be the centroid or the top left corner with the width and the height of the bounding box. So that is uh, category number two. And then there is category number three in which, you know, your, we do semantic segmentation in which the input is an image and output is also an image. So typically this would work for models such as unit. Now I've already made a video which I'm going to be linking right here and that actually talks about using GIMP. And GIMP is again another um, you know, software that it's absolutely free and you need to install it on your computer. And I will show you in, in that particular video how to annotate images to get ground truth images uh, you know, in, in return. So the two softwares or the two um, you know, methods or the tools that we are going to be reviewing today, they are actually pertaining to first and second categories only, where you are assigning a label to each and every image and also detecting bounding boxes. You can have boxes, you can have circles, you can have polygons, you know, all, all, all you, as, as you may, but typically they are not suitable for semantic segmentation. So your output uh, in the in the reviewed uh, softwares is going to be in the format of a JSON file. And the JSON file is going to contain all the X, Y coordinates of the different polygon vertices. So if you have a bounding box, it's going to tell you again X, Y, W, H. But if you have a polygon region of interest, then in that case, it's going to tell you all the location of the of the of the vertices. So that's the two different kinds of, uh, you know, annotation tools that are absolutely browser compatible that I'm going to be reviewing today. I wanted to first mention that among all of the tools that I reviewed, there were two such tools um, that I found were pretty, you know, very powerful to annotate images of all kinds of all the three categories that I talked about for classification bounding box, as well as for semantic segmentation, but they really require installation on your computer. So that's the reason why I'm not reviewing them in this particular video. But if you'd like me to create a separate video for those two tools, then please leave me a comment below and I will definitely make a video about them. So the first one is called Jupyter Enotator and the second one is called Label Image. And I will be attaching the you know links to both of them on the GitHub and in the description box below for you to check out. But again, if you'd like me to cover them, please leave me a comment. So I wanted to talk about some of the open source 
labeling tools and the data labeling methods that are already out there. And I found this great uh, GitHub that actually puts all these together in, in one place. And this has you know a great list of labeling tools for images, audio, time series, and text put together. One of the most uh, you know sleek ones would be Scalable. And Scalable is by you know Berkeley. And you will see that it can even do time series. So you can now even do you know video annotations for uh, bounding boxes as well as for moving objects. Now that we've looked at some of the annotations, you know, tools and, and systems that you need to really install on your computer in order to get them to work, I wanted to show you and, and give you access to two annotators for which you do not need any kind of installation. So they are very much based off of your web browser and you will be able to annotate images seamlessly through them if you just use your web browser. So that's why it becomes super powerful. And again, this code uh, I've created and I'm uh, releasing it on the GitHub that you will be able to then easily, you know, synchronize it with your collab in order to make it work. So let's go through this code book, uh, you know, in detail. So first of all, we will be using TensorFlow 2.2, and that is what we start by pre-installing, right, in this uh, in this code base. All right, now the TensorFlow has been already installed. We need to download what this, you know, all of this uh, you know, code right from here. This is something that I like about Colab is even if you are on some other link, if the execution is completed, it's going to tell you that, you know, the execution is, is done so that you can come back. So this is just cloning all of this repository. And the reason why you need it, because the utility files are already written in here. We are just going to be reusing it. So now we are actually going to, um, you know, call on to the object detection API. And that, that's what it is doing. It is just setting up the object detection API and all required utilities with it. All right, once we are done here, we need to start loading the libraries. So we load the libraries like the IPython, um, you know, display, and then the PIL libraries to work with images. And then we have this one function. What this function does is if you give it a path, what it will do is it will take all of the image in that particular path and create it into a NumPy array. And that array will then be used in order to scroll through images. So this is where we are at. So if you go into research and then if you go under object detection, in object detection under, under, under test images, you will see that we have three different images. So, you know, this is this dog image, then there is this outdoorsy image, and then uh, the third one, I believe, this is a large scale image. So you have these three images that are available. And what we will be doing is, you know, annotating these three images. So that's the folder location that I'm going to be passing. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just giving it a path. And then all I'm saying is just put all of them into a NumPy array. And once everything has been packaged into a NumPy array, then we will be starting to annotate. So now this is done. Now let's begin annotation. So you see, this is the first image that I showed you. So this sort of crosshair thing uh, appears, right? So what you will do is if you hit it once, click and drag. If you click and drag, and then you will start to see that your you know, bounding box is forming. Now let's say that you know this is your bounding box, but you're not happy with it. So you can say undo bounding box. And make sure you always start with the leftmost corner and then you go to the rightmost corner. And the same way if I go, go here, right? Now, once this is done, you just say submit. So submitting makes sure that the bounding box dimensions are, are submitted. Then you go to the next image. So the next image, let's say I'm making multiple such bounding boxes. And this kind of tools is very handy. Let's say that you have a very new image of in, in let's say in, in case of medical images it's like a very new image that is you know not seen before so in those cases annotating something uh, you you want to quickly you know do a proof of concept in which cases annotators like these which are very much browser based are very useful so you see I'm done and if I hit submit uh, it's, it's done if I'm done I hit submit and in order for me to check I can just go previous previous next next and you see the bounding boxes remain. So this means that uh, all of the images are completed, right? And now if I want to check GT underscore boxes, I can see, notice one thing that these pixel, all these locations are in decimals, which which means these, uh, you know, X, Y, W, H, this, uh, you know, the bounding box dimensions, it's actually normalized 
with respect to the height and the width of the image. So that's something to uh, you know be cautious about. Now what I want to do is, okay, I, I, I've taken the images, I have annotated them, but how do I save the annotations? In order to do that, what we will be doing is I will be mounting my local Google Drive. So this is how I mount my local drive. And once my local drive is mounted, I already have created this folder called annotation. So I'm just changing this location to annotation and you can, you know, create your own folder. Uh, first of all, you create it under your Google Drive and then you name, uh, you know, put that particular name here. So let's say then you, you create this, uh, you know, change the, the folder location. And then this is this one code, which is going to help you dump everything to a JSON file. So JSON file typically is a for, is, is a file format that is readable, uh, you know, by, by external systems. So now let's see if we have this file called data underscore others or not. So if I go on inside annotations, I see that there is this text file called data underscore others. And here you see there's this bounding box and all of the XYWH, all the XYWH has been dumped into here. So your annotation has succeeded. So this is how you will know that, you know, this actually works. Now let's see if you wanted to do uh, the, the same thing for your own images. So what I've done here is inside annotation, I've actually placed this uh, folder called JPEGs and in here I've placed three JPEG images. And again, these are the JPEG uh, versions from the stare, stare data set. I just put three just, you know, for, uh, for, for an example. So first of all, what I'll do is I will change the directory to point to these uh, images. And then I will load everything in a NumPy array, like I mentioned. That NumPy array is what is, uh, you know, projected for your uh, utilities. So, and then I will invoke this call. So this is a typical image, you know, a retinal image, where I want to create bounding box around each and every pathology. So I can just go about doing that whenever. So I'm actually marking hemorrhages in this case. So let's say I'm done. Uh, I say submit, and then I go to the next image. So in this case, I see a lot of hard exudates, I annotate them, and I say submit, and I go to the next image here, I see a lot of soft exudates and, and hard exudates, so I submit, if I say go next image, it says all images completed, and again, let's just dump everything, and what I want to do is a stare a bounding boxes dot text, inside JPEGs, there is the stare bounding boxes dot text. Uh, and this is the file that you are interested in. So uh, I hope uh, that you'll be able to you know, find this tool useful and use it to generate your own annotations. Now I wanted to show you another uh, software which is absolutely browser based and it can be used for annotating any kind of image. So it's actually called the VGG image annotator and I will be linking uh, it in the description box below. So the how you want to use it is first of all uh, you can you know go ahead and remove the images that are already there and let's say add file. So in this case, I've already pointed it to the three, you know, JPEG uh, files that I had, um, you know, on my folder in, in the cloud as well. So these are the three images that I have. So you can actually scroll through them. Now, the first thing you want to do in this case is first, you know, go through all of the attributes. So here you see the attributes are name, type and image quality, but these are not the attributes that I'm interested in. So what I'm going to do, the, the type and this will say, are you sure? And then image quality as well. And it'll say, that's it. And I'm done. So now I only have the name. So now let's start annotating. For the first one, let's start with a bounding box, right? So in this case, the bounding box is just a simple, you know, drag. And in this case, if you just say the name and what, what the, the beauty of it is, you can actually move this box around. You can move it around as, as many times as you want. You can increase it, you can shrink it, you can change the aspect ratio. All of that is possible once you've actually, you know, placed the annotation in and around. Same way if you have a circle, uh, here in this case, circle actually moves around uh, the, the center, if you can see. And this, this red dot over here, this is the one which is used to, uh, you know, increase or, or decrease the size. Put the, uh, the, put the name to it. So second annotation is saved. And then now let's say that I want to do a polygon. So uh, all of this area here, which is the hard exoded, I actually want to 
combine all of this and once you're done you just hit enter and you know this this whole polygon shape thing appears once this is done so now you have all of your regions and now i can just call it and that's it all the three areas are now now saved and now if i want to export the annotation i can just say ex, you know export annotation as a csv or as a json um, you know file once this is done it will actually uh, download you know this you see here this is your final json file and here you can now see that this is the name of the image and you know these are uh, if the hard exudate the red small dots the polygons all of these points are now you know already saved and next time you can actually just uh, you know upload this and you can you'll be able to see it visualize it change it modifications everything you can actually just do using the vgg uh, you know annotator so this is capable of doing not just you know bounding boxes just as you saw in the previous one but you can actually even do uh, you know polygons uh, polygons polylines points uh, you can actually do all of them so the vgg annotator again completely web-based and you'll be able to uh, create your own annotation mm -hmm.